So I wanted to talk a little bit about the LA-2A and more specifically the Universal Audio's free version of the LA-2A because it's a little bit different. It's the LA-2A that's on this UAD-X version. Uh, it's a little bit different than the Universal Audio like hardware DSP run device. But in this instance, and it reacts a little bit different, but in this instance, I want to just get, kind of show some basic examples. Now, this is a compressor limiter. Uh, that basically has a fixed engine on both compression ratios and the limiting ratio, and we can switch between them. Um, but in this instance, it, you know, I'm actually going to be using the com compressor, and the compressor is going to be run on a vocal, and it's, so it's going to be fairly simple. Um, we have two parameters that we're really looking at. One of them is how much we actually want to reduce, how much gain reduction we want to apply, meaning how much compression is being applied. And we have the actual gain output levels. And so uh, what does happen with this device is we don't get the additional sweetening of attack and release times. It's really based upon how much work it has to do. So if there's a lot of uh, uh, reduction taking place, then it's got a long way to travel. It's typically going to have a slower response. Um, and if it's really doing um, a very mild amount of reduction, then it will have a faster response because it has um, a lot smaller path to travel to get to full compression. Um, this is a song that I wrote called Betting on Blue Skies. I'm just going to run the chorus and kind of show you what this looks like. I want to start by bypassing this and just push play. Oh, I'm betting on blue skies. Well, a couple things to note early on. Um, this, because the Teletronics LA-2A was a tube compressor limiter, you get that saturated sound as you start to drive it harder, um, which kind of gives you that little bit more of a vintage -y vibe, but it also degrades a little bit of the audio to a certain degree. So like the saturation can be good and fun and and nice and thick, but it also can be problematic. So like you're noticing like immediately when I kicked it on, it was the, the gain was already a little too hot, the peak reduction was already a little driving too much. And you can see as it's as the meter is showing us the gain reduction, which is what the switch is for, um, when it's showing us gain reduction, it's showing us how much uh, compression is taking place. So each time you see these really long vocal passages, you're seeing it really step in. The I w here's the thing with the LA-2A though, okay? The LA-2A, I've worked with the real hardware versions of these in real life. I've worked with the universal audio modeling. I've used the, the Waves version, the, the CLA-2A versions. Um, there's one thing that they're notable for, they're known for, and that is you can drive them with a lot of peak reduction and still get this warm sound. Like with where a lot of other compressors, once you do it too much, you get a really shrilly sound. So the good news is, is that it'll be warm. It just might be a little too warm and maybe possibly fuzzy if you push this too far. So kind of as an easy starting point when we start with this, if we wanted to just kind of start from zero, um, you know, although the gain doesn't really give us a reference from the starting point, um, we could just basically start from zero um, and just push play and then feed our gain first and then begin to feed our reduction. So let's try that.
Now in this set, we're also seeing in this mix, we're sending this, we actually placed this on the master bus for vocals. So if I just kind of uh, pull this out of the way, you can see that there's a whole group of vocals that are being fed here. If I just shut off the audio, just, just enough. Let me just mute this for a second so you can see it visibly, you know, as I'm kind of talking about. Well, we're feeding all of the vocals from this chain here and this chain here. So you're seeing like layers of stacks that are being uh, sent to and called upon in that grouping. And so all of these vocals are, are reporting to it collectively. Now, additionally, though, on a lead, if we just had just a main lead and we wanted to focus on just that lead and we didn't have a bunch of stacks, we could also be using that LA2A on that particular vocal. Now, because of its, um, I would say, kind of slower ability in terms of attack and release, this is great in, in a lot of areas that, that we can get away with that, like overheads for drums, um, acoustic guitar, bass, um, some electric guitars, depending on what they're doing, synth and stuff like that, but really, you know, in strings, and we're just trying to stay away from things that move too fast that we don't get the kind of reaction time we need from uh, the overall reduction. So that's just kind of a quick starting point to, to kind of reference. Um, I would definitely use your ears and really just start to note when, when it kind of gets a little glowy and a little too fuzzy.